Well, when I think of Chief Howard, I think of, you know, I guess in his circle, the mighty lion taking care of all the other first origins, the supreme being, the godfather. There are many, many names for Chief Howard. My first memory of Chief Howard was when, uh, when I saw him as a first sergeant, chief first sergeant, and the only thing I could think of was uh, that he reminded me of the guy who plays on uh, Predator. Scared me to death. They fear him in the physical form, and he'll tell you. Oh, I've always told him that I have the strength of 10 men, I'm the smartest man on earth. <laughs> and he says he has the strength of 12 men. I think my favorite, though, is, uh, is the famous Chief Howard's dance. Um, that's, that's the one that's my favorite, though. When he's looking across and he's got his sunglasses on. He's just standing there, kind of like. Uh, he'll tell you about his boxing career, his uh, his knockouts. You want to take a shot at the chance? Knows about I mean, everybody knows the chief doesn't like to lose. He's pretty quick to tell you that he's four and zero in boxing, and he's the reigning champ of his family's basketball league. You know what really gets him every day is the fact that the Chiefs lost that last game, and so I will leave the 355th fighter wing as the reigning. Uh, softball champion. Him hearing that is going to upset him. There's just no way around it. He likes to win. My my greatest fear is for is is for society and not the chief. He'll do fine. He'll, he'll always do fine. Uh, they will bend to his will, and I have no doubt in my mind that they will. I'm pretty much 100% sure you're going to be watching this at least once a week. You and Sarah are going to sit down with a nice big bowl of popcorn and you'll be like, hey, look, there's the command chief on TV. Here I am again. And then you're going to have to remember that, oh, baby, we lost in the softball game. The Chiefs got stomped by the Eagles. And then you're also going to have to remember, I think you got smoked by Colonel Cherry, too, when you raced against him. You're going to have to remember that when you watch this once a week, Chief. Soldier Boy, Superman, Chief Super. I think you heard my speech, and I'm like, well, Chief Howard, what speech would that be? He goes, this is all mine. He proceeded to take me to the window and point out at Davis Mob and saying, this is mine. I own all of this. All of Chief Doc's suggestions, I own them. Why stop at Davis Mobbin? Why not go for the big one? But anytime we had to come in and justify certain things in our program, uh, I went through all the pros and cons, um, and if we had to decide to go a different way with the program, again, pros and cons in that, he would never make a face. So I did not know if he was buying into what I had to say if I was just rambling for no reason, and every single time at the end of the meeting, he either told me, I'm on board, you convince me, or make it happen. Memory I'm gonna have is when we went to the SYNC Award, and we were walking around uh, the Pentagon, you, me, and Senior Master Sergeant Herrera, and you just kinda, you went wherever you wanted to, and you kept turning to me saying, hey Chris, you think we should? You know, I said, of course. And you just said, you're darn right we should. Wandering around actually led us into the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force's office. Learned some pretty good history. Chief will walk into a room with this look on his face, like this, kind of like. Sometimes his hat will be cocked a little sideways. I was at a top three meeting, and I was sitting there with J.B. Brown, and we look at Chief Howard, he gets up and he walks over to a popcorn machine that they have in the shockwave. And I'm sitting there watching Chief Howard stand there, bowling up on this popcorn machine. He looked like he was about to throw a jab right into this popcorn machine, through the glass, and pull the popcorn out and place it into his bowl. Um, I always thought it was funny, me and JB would sit there and, and kind of sit there and be like, look, he doing it, he doing it. About every two weeks as a statue advocate, I have to go into a room, and the doors closed, with the wind commander, and you and a few other folks, and you have to talk about the state of justice on the base. Standing in front of the wind commander, you want to impress the wind commander. Standing in front of the command chief, you want him nodding. 
I didn't want to get the eyebrow. Anybody ever got me an eyebrow? Got me an eyebrow. I don't want the eyebrow. After one of those briefings, you stopped me and you said, ma'am, these are all very serious conversations. I get to hear you say things that you wouldn't, you would make the penthouse editor blush. After you brief, sometimes I just, oh, I feel like I need a shower. Some of you may not know that Chi Power is actually known globally, worldwide. Dave and I were stationed in Israelic Turkey and we found out we had an assignment to Davis Mothin. I knew the first thing I needed to do as an inbound first sergeant to Davis Mothin was to find out about this Chief Howard guy. We are on the internet looking for Command Chief Vincent Howard and it took us about two seconds to find his bio. And after a moment of analyzing his bio, I figured out quickly and I explained to David that, honey, we're in good hands. He's been a first sergeant longer than I've been in the Air Force. That's it, that's it. The other thing most people might not know, or maybe they do depending on how they see us interact, is the fact that, uh, that uh, I think I'm your angel on your shoulder, that inner voice that tries to bring you back from the brink. You are uh, definitely very confident. I don't want to use the word arrogant, but you're incredibly confident. And sometimes that confidence balloons a little bit. And so I'm that uh, little angel chief on your shoulder that tries to shrink your head a little bit, bit and bring you back to reality. I think I've done. Hi, Command Chief. I uh, just wanted to uh, say congratulations on your retirement. Uh, from the Air Force after 77 years of service. Somebody told me it was 30 years, but I thought you did 30 years as a shirt. So I can't really... I know you like to give that intimidating look. You like to be intimidating. You like to... You like to command the room. I also hope to see you come into the clinic sometime and wait space A. Eh? Now, Sergeant Poppy and I are going to have a little competition on who can impersonate Chief the best. So. Mm. Mm. Convince me. Mm. Con convince me. Convince me. No. No, no, no. You know what? That's details. That's details. Next. Next. He's like, it's all mine. All mine. It's all mine. All of it. All of it. It's all mine. All right, first sergeants, who has my breakfast? George, do not put that orange in your beer. Even though I don't drink beer myself, I drank half a Bud Light one time and I poured it out. Ah, uh, uh, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Uh, impress me. Impress. Amaze me, first sergeants. Amaze me. Because that's. Hello, Chief. Chief, this is your best friend, Rick Stebby from Wisconsin. And uh, I just wanted to say I'm really sorry about you getting fired from your job and all that stuff. Oh, you didn't get fired? Oh, you're retiring. Oh, that's even, oh, that's a lot better than being fired. So, so that's cool. All right. So, so can I call you Vince? <laughs> no. So, uh, when you retire, you're going to have a lot more time on your hands. And you, you, you probably already know that. And sometimes when people get retired, they get a little bit of weight off and all that kind of stuff. So, as you know, you know, I worked at a chalk factory and I got you some chalk here. And it's a really good stuff in different colors so you can make like different designs and everything. But, through the like, uh, activities, you could do hopscotch. And, and you're gonna need to get a job, I'm pretty sure, when you get out. So, uh, I know you were always eyeballing this thing, but so I'm gonna give you my favorite tie. So you're gonna get that for your, your interviews and you'll impress them. It's pretty flashy, so I'll put that over here too. Until you get your job, you're probably gonna need some money, you know, because things are gonna be a little tight and you're not getting the paycheck. So, uh, I, I got to took up a little bit of the fun here, so I'm gonna give you that too. It's probably about like a dollar and fifty cents or something. And you're gonna still, after you do a lot of hopscotch, you're gonna need some nourishment. So I got you my favorite and your favorite, double eggs.
I have to eat it good. I'll, I'll leave you that half right there. The last thing you're going to need, because you get, you're going to need somewhere to put it. I'm going to give you my suitcase to put all this stuff in. It's pretty awesome. I just wanted to tell you, man, if you, when you're done and you're tired and you ever come up to Wisconsin, uh, just come, come see me.